sanding beams. Um, so these ones, they're just, it's just aluminium sort of rectangular hollow tubing. Oop, there we go. Yeah. Um, just from Bunnings, I think I bought a, a metre length and I cut, um, oop, which one are we going? That way. So I've got sort of to that length and then I had the, the leftover bit. Um, and you can see I use they are with lots of different grits of sandpaper and, um, you know, all those kind of things. So uh, that's probably the 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 most budget um, tool that I've got. These uh, socket wrenches. Ah, yep. So I, I, I bought a, like a cheap box of long ones and they're great because they just fit over pegs so that I can fit it over my tuning peg and adjust. The, to take off the the nut or the bushings, I, I've got a larger one which fits over a volume pot, so yep. I can tighten and untighten there. And I can't remember how much the set was; it wasn't that expensive at all. Um, and I don't even I just hold them like this now. I can do it by hand tight enough. Don't need the wrench or anything. And I've just got them lined up above where I set everything up. I use them like they're one of my most regularly used things. I think when a guitar comes in for a setup. Just the center finding ruler. Um, and I know there's gonna be cheap brands of you got one there? Yeah. yeah I know there's gonna be to <laughs> I know there's gonna be cheap um brands around, but you know, probably when I was doing a Stu Mac order and yeah, you know, it's it's not gonna break the bank to, to buy this one anyway. Um I I think I use this I don't know, probably more than anything else. Um for the center finding, just for the the measurements, it's what 15 centimeters or what's that, six inches or so. Um I find it's just a, a good size that you know you're not putting a, a big long ruler on something to measure. Um but yeah, that that center finding feature, um I think I'd be I'd be lost without it. I'd be like making a lot of um calculating errors with without having that. I have to agree, that's why I've got this one, which is really cheap, but it, I only got this about, oh, it was within, within this year, and it's yep. changed what I do so much. <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah. In, yeah, the Aldi supermarket, all of the um, the cheap tool stuff is branded as WorkZone. Um, so this is basically a, a set of small files. So they're not, um, yeah, the quality is sort of pretty cheap. Um but they're, they're pretty fine and they're not super sharp. But for the jobs that I use them for, that works really well. So, you know, the triangular file for um, opening up the fret slots before putting it in, um, this one works brilliantly because it's it's not going to take out, you know, too much wood. You kind of have to do, um, you know, work at it a little bit. So it's not, a, it's not a, you know, budget as in there's a cheap version, but it's something that's not too expensive. And that's the, the old bench cookies or... You know, they're called different things in different countries just with the, the labeling. Um, and I, you know, use these all of the time. I think when I sort of first started um, routing out cavities on bodies, I'd be clamping the, the guitar to, to a bench or double-sided tape or, you know, masking tape and super glue um, to get that down. But honestly, four of these and, you know, the, the instructions say that you can do this, but you don't sort of trust it. But... To have four of those under a guitar body, you know, in the in the right spot, um, it's as sturdy as anything with a even with a big router to route out um, neck neck pockets, cavities, um, pickups, any of those kind of things. So I kind of find they save a ton of time just yeah. trying to you know, clamp something down. You can even like doing randovers on the edge as long as you don't sort of tip it too much. Um, you know, you can sort of I've used it for that as well. Um, so just for yeah for work holding, um, same with using an orbital sander on the body. Um, you put the guitar on that, and they just don't doesn't move at all. Um, so it's, it's a center finding drill bit. I think ah uh, yep. hinge bits. Um, yep. And this was a cheap one. I, again, I got it in a set, and I keep thinking when it finally breaks, I'll buy a decent one just in this size. But I find when I'm laying out particularly scratch plates on a guitar. I can put that down, then put this into the hole that's already counted in the drill in the scratch plate, and then yep. when you press it, the drill bit comes out. Ah, okay, yep, yep. So it's it's just perfect for do one screw it in and then work my way round. And yeah. my screws are always perfectly in the centre of the hole of the 
scratch plate that's already there. Yeah. And my screws don't go in slightly wonky. Digital calipers, so same kind of thing. This is only, a, I know you can probably buy fancy expensive ones, but this was the, the first set I bought when I sort of got into all this, you know, six, seven years ago probably. Um, and, yeah, gets used more than anything else, yeah, measuring. Um, so I think, yeah, I probably don't need to say too much about this. If you haven't got a, a set of calipers and you, you want to get into guitar booting or you're just starting, um, you will save yourself a whole lot of misery by um, getting these. And really, yeah, going between those two, um, whatever's the most convenient to use, um, you know, obviously using this to um, find a center as well um, is, is good. I've had this for ages. I don't think it's that cheap. It's a drill guide, drill bit guide. Yep. But I've also got this really cheap circular um, temp, uh, stencil. Now, the problem yep. with the stencil is it's got numbers on it, but they're not actually perfectly correct if you compare it to this. Uh, but okay, it doesn't yep. really matter because the way I use it is I just normally use it to put a screw in. If I'm Because I'm, I often use random screws that I've got lying around. Put a screw yep. in and then I can work out what, which drill bit I need. But then with yep. this one, I can just put the screw in or the um, uh, the pot or whatever it is that I'm measuring and then put the, the drill in and check it matches. So yeah. I've often got this lying around to check because I've noticed sometimes recently the pots I'm using don't match up to um, the drill bit that I was expecting to use. Yep, okay. I, mean, I guess I've been buying different makes or whatever. It's usually not good to get cheap tools. If, you, if you're going to get a tool... Um, a lot of times getting the cheapest one is is not going to be good yeah i've mentioned before mm. that sometimes i buy a cheap tool to decide whether i want to use it for <coughs> an expensive one but then what you notice is you think oh maybe i don't want to use this tool but it's actually because it's so cheap that it's rubbish not because it's the wrong tool it's yeah. just because it's cheap mm. so it's, it's hard now, if you've watched this, you're probably interested in guitar building. So I've pinned in the first comment of the video information about the Jurgs Cup. It's a community build along project where you can build along in your own time with no pressure and share on social media using the hashtag I am Jurgs. The cup is in honor of Jurgen Zoller of Zoller Guitars, who is very much missed from this community. Information on how to take part and how to share is in that comment as is a link to the particular space on the guitar builders collective forum where you can get even more information and share with the community what you're doing as you go along get some hints get some tips and of course there's other parts of the community there as well the guitar builders collective led to the live stream podcast that all the parts of this compilation were taken from and you can find a link in the video description to all past and future episodes via the Guitar Builders Collective chat playlist or just subscribe to my channel Devil and Sons Guitars, hit that bell and you'll get notifications of when new episodes are coming out.